hi and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a lovely day today. For the free tutorial today, we're going to work on what we achieved last week, which was the Dragon Scale Netted Basic Pendant, and we're going to turn it into something just a little bit more elaborate. Now this is quite an old Dragon's Eye design. You can see it's darkened quite a lot. I've had this in my cabinet for a couple of years now. And what we're going to do is improve upon this today, and we're going to work with one of these little glass Dragon's Eye cabochons. If you'd like to join me down at the board, I'll show you what we're going to work towards and talk about the materials that we'll need. So this is quite an old design and I'm going to improve upon this today. We're going to work together towards something not dissimilar, a little bit inspired by this old piece. Let's just pop that up in the corner. And here are the pieces that we made last week together which is that lovely dragon scale wire netting design. Suitable for beginners, just takes a little bit of slowing down and control with movements. Now for the tutorial today, I'm going to work with this piece. This is a hand painted dragon's eye cab that was sent to me by my lovely friend Anne out in California hand prepared and posted across the pond. I just need to straighten that up in a minute. But what we're going to do is work towards a technique which will make this just a little bit more elaborate. Now in terms of your materials, we're going to be working with my two favourite gauges of wire. I've got 18 gauge, which is one millimetre wire, and I've got three 12 inch lengths. We're also going to be working with quite a long amount of that 0.4 or 26 gauge wire. As ever, I'm working in raw copper round, simply because I just like the way that it can turn darker over time. You can see this has been hanging around quite a while and it's lovely and fluid to work with. So the first thing that I would do with my three 12 inch lengths of that one millimeter wire is just give that a little bit of a warm through and a straighten up. At the moment, it's just straight off the spool. It's a little bit hard. It's a little bit kinked in places. And I want all three of those to be ready for action. They are each approximately 12 inches in length. And as I said, they are raw copper in that round profile. So what we're going to do to begin with is to create something along this kind of line, which looks like a very exotic angel fish or something. And you can make with as many or as few loops. You don't even have to put loops on it. I'm going to show you how to make it with three loops. And that makes quite a small design, which sits over the face of the cabochon. But you can also work with five loops. Now this makes a design which sits much further around. So it depends if you want a really open dragon's eye look, or if you want something a little bit more closed up with those loops sitting over part of the face of that glass cabochon. Now just as an example, I have a couple of other pieces here. This is what those glass cabs look like. It's just a, a printed picture on the back with a standard 30 millimeter or one and a quarter inch glass dome. Or you can work with genuine gemstones. Be still my beating heart, it is the most beautiful labradorite. That's going to be making its way to my Monday Live very, very soon. Like I said to you before, I'm going to be working with Anne's gorgeous purple hand painted, very sparkly dragon's eye today. I'm also going to be using my six step bell makers. Now you don't have to use those, but they are really handy because they enable me to make repeatable sizes with those loops up at the top there, or those, I don't know, really know what they're called, prongs I want to say. So for one of my pieces of wire, let's clear the board slightly. I'm going to find the dead center and I'm going to make a very, very sharp angle on that piece to begin with. I'm going to push the wire all the way over the prong and then I'm going to pop that to one side so you can see that we've got a deep V shape and that's in the dead centre of that 12 inch length of wire. I'm just going to give that a little squish to harden it up and then just ease that gently open just a little bit and you can refer that to the size of your cab if you need to. We're not going to use that for a moment though so up to the top it goes. What I'm going to do next is create loops in the center of the second and third pieces of wire. And I'm going to make one that's really small and then one that's slightly larger. Now you can do that with standard round nose pliers if you wish. I'm going to find the approximate center of that wire. What I do want to do in exactly the same way as I worked my interlocking hearts is make sure that when I cross those wires over, 
you can see here that the wire that's down on the left hand side of that pin is going closer towards me so over the top so let's just create a nice V shape for the moment and pop that down so you can see the wire that's going off to the left is underneath the wire that's going off to the right is over the top and I want to repeat that when I go for the next size up as I said you can use standard round nose pliers and what we're going to do is make another loop with a very similar angle needs to be in approximately the centre of the wire so I've put that far too far over on one side so I'm just going to rotate those pliers around until I make a little bit of a difference. So again the underneath wire is going off to the left, the over the top wire is on the right hand side so those two loops need to be similar in that fashion and then what we're going to do is just to close those angles up a little bit. I'm going to use my thumbs and fingers just to generate a little bit of a basic eye shape to begin with. If you overcook it slightly, then you can always use your pliers just to get that set ever so slightly better. So we're going to do the exact same thing over here on this side, just to start generating those shapes. So I'm just going to pop those down for a hot moment. And then we're going to take a look at the pieces that I've already prepared. Let's just pop this over this side. Now in my original inspiration piece you can see that the loops are down at the bottom. This will enable me if I wish to to add charms or pieces of chain coming down off the bottom of the design. But equally it just looks quite pretty to have those loops over the design as well. So it doesn't matter if it's over the top or underneath, whichever makes you happy. So what we need to do now is line up the looped sections. Now the way to do this is just to very gently tease open the slightly larger loop that we've created and what we're going to do is slide in the smaller one inside that and if you find that the loop you've created isn't quite large enough you can just open that out very very gently until they fit one inside the other. So what I'm going to do is just slide one inside the other one and then just pull that up into position so that they nestle together. If there is not enough space in that loop, then you are quite easily able to just open that size out. So I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and just tease that loop into a slightly larger shape very easily. And I'll pinch that with thumb and forefinger just while I reform the wires like so. Just leaving that open slightly, I can sneak the smaller loop inside the larger loop until those sit neatly together. So it's slightly uneven at the moment, so the way we're going to fix that is just to grip one loop on top of the other and press until those wires sit neatly. So you can get them to sit super tightly and ensure that you're happy with how that looks. This is one of the focal pieces of the pendant, so you will want to maybe drop that back out, tighten it up slightly, and then just have that sitting exactly how you think is perfect. So once you've got those two loops sitting one inside the other, so it's a little bit like a tram track, I'm just going to pull those wires to warm them through, make them a little bit more fluid, reform that eye shape. What we're going to then do is sit the smallest or the loopless wire rather, in the very, very center. And what we need to do is to get all of those lining up. So you've got three segments of wire, all moving smoothly side by side. So let's just pop that down a moment. And you can sit and you can play with that to your heart's content until you get that exactly how you see fit and warming that wire again and again. So what I've done here is I've over clenched that angle in the center so I just need to open that gently out until that sits exactly how it looks best. A lot of wire work is very, very small moments and movements like this, just getting everything to whatever satisfies you in terms of perfection. So just putting quite a lot of heat into that wire, you can see that it will eventually get to where you want it to. So before you move on, do continue fiddling around with that until it's exactly where you want it to be. So for me, I would probably just open that out slightly, push that upper wire down and keep going until that's exactly how you want it to sit. 
So overall, it probably took me about two and a half minutes just to get all of those wires neatly side by side, all running beautifully parallel and making sure that all of the angles were aesthetically pleasing. So that's not something that I want you to have to sit through. So I've just done that off camera and I'll show you now how to start weaving those lines together. So I've just wrapped a bit of scrap wire around the lower section just to hold everything together at the beginning. And what I'm going to do is just get a basic shape that I want to work with today. So if I offer this piece over the top, I can see that I need to bring the lower side down just a little bit more. But the upper side is looking pretty much where I want it to be in terms of size. So if I just drop the cab back onto the board for now, what I'm going to do is just open out the end section. So the uppermost of all of my wires, I'm just going to gently pull upwards and the lower of the top section downwards and then the middle one just upwards slightly so they're all just splayed out at the ends but I've not put too much stress on that upper section that's where we're going to start working today the lower collection of three wires I've banded as I said with a piece of scrap wire and I've just drawn the tails gently downwards towards the board this enables me just to pop everything down and things don't get too clustered now for the upper side I'm not going to use any loops so I can work directly from the reel. The wire that I'm choosing to use today is 0.4mm or 26 gauge wire and it is round copper. I'm going to start with the lowest of those upper three wires and I'm going to turn around that wire about six or seven times. As long as you recreate it when you're adding wire to the lower side, it's really not important how many wraps you have. You can choose to make that a thing if you wish to. Let's just say there's about five or six wraps on there and I'm going to make sure that that end section is nice and smooth and I'm going to scooch that little coil all the way along. You can see that the wires will move around a little bit, but what I want to do is bring that all the way into the centre where we put the first bend in that section of wire that doesn't have a loop. So I've scooched that all the way along to that angle. And what I'm going to do now is just very gently open up the top wire again so that I've got easy access. The routine I'm going to follow is my New York skyline weave. So let me grab one of these other woven sections. I've been working with this weave since around about 2014 and I call it the New York skyline because it kind of looks like a bunch of little art deco buildings. I don't live in a city, I live in a small village outside of a medium sized town, so I don't see these things very often, but it just reminds me of the New York skyline, hence the name. So that's what we're going to work towards today. Now the way that this weave works is that you have three wraps around the lowest wire, then two wraps around the lowest and the middle wire, and then a single wrap around all three wires. So the base wire is used every single time so let's get going with that weave. So let's say that we've just cast on to begin with. What we're going to do now is two wraps around the base wire and the middle wire. So I'm going to draw the wire over the surface of my section that I'm looking to weave and I'm going to take the wire down between the base and number two. Pull that nice and firmly. So it's important to have tension in wire weaving, but what we don't want is too much tension because you then cannot get a fine wire between the heavier wires. So I'm going to go for a second wrap around number one, the base wire, and number two, the middle wire. So I've wrapped around both of those two wires, bringing the wire back to the front, and I'm working, as I said, from the reel, so I have zero wastage on this design. I have two wraps now around the base wire and the middle and I'm going to take that wire all the way over the top so that I'm wrapping all three wires together. Now it is really important that you don't over tighten at this stage because we will need access up here between the number two and the top wire later on. So bringing the tail of the wire that's connected to the reel back all the way through and you can continually just very, very gently ease these wires apart, make your life as easy as possible. I want you to enjoy wire work, not suffer it. So we're going to now wrap twice around the base and middle wires. So taking the tail all the way through, scooching those wires up together, bringing the body of the wire through, 
wrapping around a second time, scooching those wires up neatly again, tense but not too tense, <laughs> bringing the body of the wire through, and then three wraps around just the lowest section. So that's one wrap around the lowest or base wire, two wraps, scooch that neatly up, a third wrap, and we'll take that wire to the back and push it all the way over. So that is one New York skyline segment done. And every time I complete a sequence, I'm going to push the wires all the way from the right hand side up against those wraps. If you're left dominant, you can simply invert the design. I'm just going to turn that light down slightly. That's better. That's probably a little bit too much. <laughs> can't win. There we go. So we've got one New York skyline in place. The tail of the wire is coming down. I just want to make sure everything is nice and flat. I'm supporting the tail of wire and I'm going to squeeze across that design. Now I'm not applying a huge amount of pressure but I'm setting the design now. So I'm happy with that weave. I'm happy that it's nice and tight and I'm now going to repeat. So I've got my three wraps around just that base wire. The light keeps changing because the sun is coming in and out. <laughs> I'm now going to wrap twice around the base and middle wire, scooching it neatly and tidily. That's one. Two wraps, bringing the tail and the body of wire all the way up, creating a wrap now around all three wires, pulling the body of the wire back through, wrapping twice around the two wires. So it's almost like a mathematical I've missed a wire, let me just check that. We need to be wrapping twice around the two wires. That's better. And then three times around just the base wire. Once you get into the rhythm of it, it can become a second nature and quite simple. When you have to think about it, it's a little bit trickier, but it is not a difficult weave to master. So I'm just going to push everything over, make sure that everything is flat, there's nothing kinked at the back. What we're then going to do is to compress it from left to right, pull the wire down and out of the way, and squish the whole weave together. If one of your wires has gone astray, you can just tidy that up slightly like so, and you'll get that nice, neat, it's almost an art deco feel to it. I realise that the rest of the world says art deco, I've always said Art Deco, I can't help myself, I'm terribly sorry. One more time and then we will move on to the next technique. So I've got three wraps around that base wire. I'm then going to go for two wraps around the two wires. One wrap around all three wires, not too tight. I need to be able to get a wire in this position later on. And then I'm going to wrap twice around the two lower wires, that's once. That's a second time, scooching those wires over as we go. And then I'm going to wrap three times around the lowest wire. Scooch everything up once you've completed a segment. Make sure there's nothing crossed over at the back. Pull the wire down to safety and then give that a squish and a squeeze. So in order to tell you what my plan is next, I'm going to bring in a stunt piece. Now this was created in the opposite direction because I like to play around with which side the eyes are looking from. So for the upper section or the section that has no loops, and you can go for loops on both sides if you wish to, I work from the reel. There is no drama working from the reel. And in that way, you can stop with the wire whenever you want to. For this particular piece, I'd already cut the wire and I had a long tail, so I wrapped all the way around just one of those pieces and I'll tie everything together towards the end of today's tutorial. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to create the loops and how to weave with loops in that outermost wire. For the next section, I'm going to show you how to create loops. You can have as many or as few loops as you desire. You can do them both sides. You don't have to have them at all. Um, I'm going to create a series of five loops, I think, for the piece we're working on together. And I will show you that you need to cut wire to work with this weave when there are loops involved. And I'm going to give you estimates on how much you might need. So if you join me back down at the board, we're going to grab those multi-step bell making pliers and get cracking on. 
So I've just taken a moment to finish my New York skyline weave and if we hold that up to one of my cabochons you'll see that I've given it plenty of weaving. And where I had a little extra wire I just added a single weave down on one of those wires. It doesn't really matter which one but I chose to use it on the base wire. This point is where we're going to be tying things together in a little while but I want to show you now the option of creating loops. So the loops need to be created on one of your outermost wires if you're going to use them. So I'm just going to very very gently prise this one away from its grouping and pop a little bit of extra heat and warmth all the way through there. Now you can use standard round nose pliers, I'm going to grab those trusty six section bail making pliers and I think I'm going to go for the tiny tiny loop. Now as I mentioned before you can use this to add charms or chains off the bottom or you can use them as I did in this original piece from a couple of years ago over the face of that cabochon. So what we're going to do is warm that wire, that spare wire that we have coming away now and let's say I wanted to put three loops or five loops I would estimate whereabouts that would need to happen so if we imagine that the eye is going to sit let's just draw that up slightly more firmly if we imagine the eye is going to sit like this over the face of the chosen cabochon then you would need to position your middle loop beneath that central section so let's imagine that we were going to go for three loops on this one what I will do is introduce those round sections of the bail making pliers bring the tail all the way around returning that to the baseline so if I put that bail maker back inside and just squish it up you can see that that's gone a little bit baggy so if that does happen you can just tighten it up slightly put the bail makers back in at the correct size and then you can re-straighten that like so so let's add three loops on this piece and then I will begin to show you how you can do the weaving with a cut length of wire. So let's bring that second loop into position and you can always grab that cabochon and make sure that it's sitting in the correct position. Tighten that up if you need to and then bring that baseline back so that it will sit adjacent to the middle wire in the lower grouping of those three wires. And then let's pop a third loop in for this demonstration section catching the camera as we go because why wouldn't I and then you can just take those pliers and use them whichever way sits best what we're looking for is even spacing between those loops and then we need that wire to return to a good flat baseline so if that hasn't happened pop the bail makers or your round nose pliers back into position and then just smooth and warm that wire until you get those wires to cooperate with you. So I'm happy with the path that that lowest wire has taken. Everything is still sitting neatly together. What I'm going to do is open out those end wires in exactly the same as we did before. Now the eagle-eyed might have noticed that I'm going to push the upper wires slightly back and bring the lower grouping of three ever so slightly up. If you're gentle with the wire you can swap this around a couple of times just to make your life easy. So if I pop that down on the board you can see where we've got to. Now for a section of wire weaving around about this size you can see that my cabs are approximately 30 millimeters or one and one quarter inches give or take. I would say that for this section of weaving you'll need about 36 inches of that lighter gauge wire. If you want to go for a slightly more extended size like this section that I have as a sample over here this used around about 42 inches in total of that lighter gauge wire so it depends how much you want to go for but it does need to be cut from the reel because we're going to be passing the wire through those loops. So let's start by winding on I'm going to trim away around about three feet, around about 36 inches of that lighter gauge wire and then we will get set with the next stage of the tutorial. So it's quite a lot of wire to deal with but this is a project that you can achieve if you're newer to wire work. So again I'm going to start with the innermost, in this instance it's the upper wire that becomes our base the one that's closest to the centre and that's where we're going to wind on 
the same number of times you wound on in here. So I went for five in there just because that's a really good, strong connection point to your central frame. So you can whiz that around at the open end just to make your life ever so slightly easier. And if you've got too many wraps, you can simply trim away that teeny tiny end. I'm just going to chase that end until it sits flat against my base wire. Now, bearing in mind that because we are working on the underside, the lower grouping of three, the base wire is now the highest of the three. So the terminology is tricky. The technique isn't. We're going to push that all the way into the inner corner of the eye. And you can sit that opposite wherever it sits on the upper side just to get a sense of symmetry. It can move around a little bit to begin with, but I wouldn't worry overly. It's going to look quite pretty and we might put some funny stuff over it anyway. We might add some swirls and squirrels. So if it does go slightly awry, don't fret. What I'm going to do off camera now is just a little bit of the standard New York skyline. When I get to the part that's different where these loops occur, I'll join you back in just a second. So I've generated a couple of blocks of that New York skyline. You can see I've got four little Art Deco buildings. And we're now at the point where we have to do something that might be just a little bit different. So if I show you that a little bit more closely, you can see I've done my three wraps around the base wire, the uppermost of this three. And I'm just going to open these out very gently so it's easier for you to see. I'm now going to wrap around the base wire and the next wire to it twice, exactly as we normally would. It just means that you need to slow down slightly, drawing the wire all the way around. And now we have to create that single wire wrap that goes around all three of those sections. So this is the point in time that we need to have a cut end on our length of finer wire. And I'm going to bring this up inside the loop that sits nearest to where we are right now. Now, because this wire has been wrapped several times, I'm going to take extra care that I don't cause any stress to it. And I'm going to allow it to just loop around my finger until the last minute and then I'm going to guide it carefully up inside the loop, scooching that tension into the weave and then bring the wire over the top and all the way around, allowing that to sit adjacent to the preceding two wraps. And then I'm going to bring the tail of wire up just above the lowest, the looped wire. We're then going to do our standard two wraps around the base wire and the next wire to it, drawing that all the way through to the back, scooching that carefully up so we get that nice tension. Again, making sure that you've not got it too tight up at the top here because we need these access points later on. And then I will continue to wrap three times around just that base wire. And that is how you avoid getting caught out with the wire from coming on the reel. You need that cut end, so there's that third wrap. So I'm going to put the tension into those little coils, scooch everything over, and I'm going to give it a bit of a squish, as I have been doing with the side of my pliers, but I'm going to protect where that single wire sits inside the loop with my thumbnail, just so that when I press down, we're not putting any additional stress or strain on that single wire by itself. What can happen if you squish hard down on that single wire that covers a couple of sections of uppermost wire is that you will cause it to snap, you'll fracture it, and then you'll have to start again. And that's very, very sad and frankly, a little bit boring. So I will simply continue along with that New York skyline weave until I get to approximately the same position as I wove to on the other side. Now, as I mentioned before, you can have whichever number of loops you desire. You can have loops on both sides or you can avoid using the loops altogether. It really depends on how you want your final project to look. So I'm going to continue all the way along and I'll meet you back in just a moment. I've decided I'm going to use the five looped eye design that I created earlier on before I began recording today's video. And I'm going to show you how that looks on Anne's beautiful hand painted purple dragon eye cabochon. So I will show you first of all how to create the basic shape, how you might embellish that, and also how to connect the pendant that we made last week together with the eye design. 
So I am going to continuously refer back to the size of the project I wish to encase or attach to the eye design. So I'm just going to pop this. I appreciate this is upside down. It's because I want the loops down below, but I'm right dominant. So I'm going to work on it in this fashion. You can obviously invert it at any time to make you happy, whatever's easiest for you. So one of the first things we're going to do is to just very gently dome our wire work. So at the moment it's quite flat and what we're looking to do is to just gently tip up the innermost, those base wires, so that they're standing higher than the outermost wires. And it's very very simple to do that because the heavier wires, those frame wires, move inside the weaving wires that you've done. You may need a little bit more power on the side if you have used loops, but once you've domed it, it will sit slightly more like so. So you're making a bit of a bezel cup for the cab to sit neatly into. Once you've achieved that, we're going to ensure that size-wise your dragon's eye frame isn't going to be too large for that dragon pendant. So I think that looks pretty decent. As I said before, this is a very old project and I made it so that the loop sat over the face of the eye. That is of course a choice. You do have the option to sit it much more closely to the eye, whatever makes you happy. We're going to be connecting through the outermost wires a little bit later on. So overall I'm quite happy with how that's sitting. So I'm going to pinch that very very firmly. Now the outermost wire, if you've used loops, will be much shorter and that's absolutely fine because we're just going to use that to bend over the back of the opposite cluster of three wires. I'm just leaving those splayed apart so you can see how it all connects together. So there is a point at which I want this to connect because it will cover the eye the way that I desire it to be covered. So I'm putting a little bit of pressure with my non-dominant hand whilst I bring that short tail of wire all the way around that collection of opposite wires. And then I'm going to grab a set of pliers and draw that very, very firmly over that little set of three. Now you can take this to the rear side and cut it, but I really enjoy bunging spirals on everything. So I am going to bring a spiral into play just here. So I'm going to take the very end of that short tail of wire. Looking at it, I can see that it was cut with the flush side of my cutter, so I'm quite happy with that. If it isn't, you'll need to trim that very end section away. And I'm just creating a very tiny spiral one of the reasons that I do this is it means I can squash that wire down over the surface really, really firmly, tighten it up from both sides like so, and just give that a squeeze. And I now know that the whole thing is set. There will be a little bit of flexibility as yet, but we're going to add some more wire turning and twisting as we go through. So let's just pop that onto my upside down pendant and ensure we're happy. If for any reason it doesn't sit exactly how you want it to, you do have the capacity to just mess around with that overall shape. If it's too narrow, you can push from either end to very, very gently and softly bring this slightly wider. Conversely, you can very gently pull that apart if you need a little extra space. For now, I'm quite happy with how that's looking. I can see that it's reasonably centralizable with my central middle loop is going to be in line with the bail and the is it called an iris i can't remember i am not an optometrist jim so let's just push that around again i'm lowering either end of that to add to the doming effect do you remember we domed the wire just by pushing the middle sections up so we're going to do that as well so it starts to wrap around and form on that gemstone now you've got lots of options now we can pop the cabochon pendant to one side and work out what we're going to do with all of these little bits and bobs. Very simply, you can scroll and coil on either end. If you wish to continue weaving, you can add a little extra wire, do a little bit more fancy weaving and bring that back over the top, which is what I did with one of these. All I have done is just bent it back on itself. So I've got a little bit of extra wire here that perhaps I could have done without adding and then I could have done a one and two or a two and five weave of some description. All I mean by that is just a fancy collection of wires. As it happens, I don't think that's going to work, but it might with these two wires. So I'm just going to draw those up and out the way for now. 
and this wire with the huge amount of wire just double wrapped around it's a bit like a gizmo coil at the moment that i'm going to help lock this design into position so what i will do for this and you obviously have all different options dependent on how your wire has worked out I'm going to trim it to around about half an inch from where the gizmoed wire ends and I'm going to start with another spiral. You don't have to put spirals on everything but I think it looks really attractive. So I've just taken that last half inch of wire and started spiraling, spiraling it around. Now when you are using flat pliers on wire that is already on top of other wire you do need to be quite careful because what can happen is you can fracture the wire. So you could use nylon jaw pliers, you could use your fingers if you have good grip strength, or you could just apply very, very delicate touch to start spiraling around. And it is in exactly the same way as I've shown you how to spiral a number of times. You're just pushing into your non-dominant hand. I've done a lot of wire working today, which is why my finger skin is a little bit sad and tired looking. There we go. So I'm just going to continue spiralling until this sits up where I wish it to end. So I'm going to bring it all the way up, bending that wire around, and I'm just going to flip that on its face and sit it at the opposite corner of the eye. Now, if you don't like how it looks, because you're being gentle, you can take that back a step. You could maybe have it sitting the other way around. I think that's much prettier. Actually, I think that looks much nicer. So you can move that around. If you're gentle with your wire, you do have further options on how it's going to respect you back, basically. So you can see that that's tightened up ever so slightly. If you wanted that to be wider, again, you can push the two ends together or pull them apart. Whatever you need to do, there's a little bit of flexibility built into this design. So these two wires that I have available here, what I might do is grab my finer gauge wire again, and I'll just show you an example of how you might add some additional weaving. So I'm going to give that a bit of a warm through first. And I need to just take a look underneath to see what's going to be the best course of action. Now, I want them to come back in this direction, but ideally I want them on the other side because I'd like to leave my loops visible. So what I may end up doing is trimming these two away or making teeny tiny coils with them. And I think I'll use these upper two to do some weaving with instead. So if I draw that back over the body of the design, this is going to be the top side. Let me just grab the pendant and put it into its final orientation, like so. So that is how it's going to end up, because I want those loops down at the bottom. I may add chain or charms, I may not, haven't decided. So there's enough wire here available for me to come all the way back to the inside of the eye. So let's drop that pendant back out of the way for a second, warm this wire through, and I do have the option to undo this coiling down on this first section here, but I'm not going to waste time doing that today. I'm simply going to add my wire on to begin with around one of those two wires that I have to work with. And all of this is completely optional. You can go for very, very basic designs if you prefer, or you can go for something much more elaborate. I'm just showing you what I'm working with today how my individual dragon's eye is working out. Now I've made dozens of these over the years and uh, they all turn out different. I sometimes make them as double ended pendants that are joined by chain. So let's scooch that all the way along to meet up with the preceding piece of wire working. Now, if you didn't like how that meets up, you can simply undo the wire here. And if you need to know how to do that, let's just open this out just in case you wanted to. What you would do is just start picking at the end until you can get a piece to come away. And can you see how that's just very softly lifted up? Yep, you can see that on screen there. What you would need to do is pick that until it comes loose and then unspool it exactly the same way as it went on, very, very gently. We're trying to not harm the frame wire that we're using. So just pick away at that until you get a good start and then you can pull that all away. So let me just open it. There we go. So once you've got an access point, it's very easy to undo that. So what I'm going to do is put you off screen for a moment, 
uncoil all of the wire just here and we'll start by doing a little 5-2 weave just over the top. So I'll be back in just a second. So that's what that little coil of wire looks like now and I've trimmed it very very closely and carefully and just scooched the end of the remaining coil down hidden out of the way. So we've now got those two naked wires to work with and if I grab that spool of copper wire this again is 0.4 or 26 millimeter gauge and I'm just going to try and slide that back on to save a bit of time and see if it works. Yes it does. So I've looped on five or six times and I'm going to take that all the way down to the start point. Now for a 5-2 weave it's exactly what it says, it's not like dieting, you're all good. What I'm going to do is wrap five times around the lower of the two wires I'm choosing to work with right now. Now they are a little bit tense so why don't we give that a little bit of a warm and I'm very strongly protecting the integrity of my design here and then firmly pulling through some warmth onto those two tails. I've wrapped five times around the lower wire so I'm now going to wrap rather twice around both of them, scooch the wires up and then wrap another five times around the lowest wire. So let's just open that up a second and make it easier to see. This is a base weave. It's really, really simple and really, really useful. Every time I complete a segment, so I've done five wraps there, I'm going to scooch that up and then I will continue to wrap two times around both wires and then return to five times around the lower wire. So I will do a little bit more weaving and I'll join you back in a moment. I've continued with those two wires that I had spare that I brought up to the top in a 5-2 fashion and then I've gone for a little bit of extra single weaving on one and I have a tail of wire still available to me. Now we were working from the reel and I've left that couple of inches of extra wire from that 0.4 or 26 gauge because I may want to tie it onto the frame. One of the reasons that I haven't done my Dragon's Eye tutorial before is because every time I make one it's different, it's a really organic process. So I hope that you're enjoying the designing process as much as I am because I love making these babies. Let's head back down to the board and see what happens next because I'm going to be as surprised as you are. Let's just size everything up for a moment. So I could have continued with that 5-2 a little bit longer but what I want to do is get it tied off on the other side so that everything is nice and secure and safe. I do see a lot of jewellery in the marketplace. I've had a number of people come to me and ask me to fix the work that other people have created and it's purely because it hasn't quite been finished. So I always want to have an element that makes everything work and an element of beauty but also an element of professionalism. I don't want there to be any loose ends or sticky outy bits or things that can come easily undone. So right now we're still working on the dragon's eye itself and we're going to leave that pendant to one side and I'm going to very very cautiously and carefully little bit of warmth into that extra section of weaving over the top and just bring it down to the corner. Now I actually quite like the idea of bringing it slightly over the surface of the design. I don't know, I think that looks kind of cool but if you prefer to you can take that evenly over the top. Let's just flatten that little section down otherwise it will bug me later. There we go. I think I'll go for symmetry rather than asymmetry but you do have the option of bringing that swooping down over the surface absolutely up to you. So I don't think I'm going to need that tail of wire. What I may do is just wrap it around and do another coiled coil like this one. We're going to use this section of wire just here to tie around the inner section of that dragon's eye. So bringing that curve really, really slowly into position. I think I'm quite happy with how that looks. You can obviously play around with angles to your heart's content. Let's just draw this around this side so that it doesn't get in the way. And we're going to take this segment all the way around that inner loop, like so, back around in exactly the same way that we tied on the other side. And again, when I'm pressing down, I'm not going to press down on those two little wires. I'm going to press down on just the bare wire. Now we have a nice flat end here as well to work with. So let's put, I don't know, maybe a little coil on. I like coils on my dragon's eyes. 
why wouldn't you if you have the option? So it doesn't have to be a large one, it doesn't have to be a small one, it can sit exactly how you desire. I think I'm going to sit it exactly over the top of that central inside double loop that we started with right back at the beginning of today's masterclass. What we can do now is continue to coil this wire around and I'm not going to make you watch me do that for very long. Although to be fair, I can actually be quite quick with this one. If it gets loose, you can scooch that all the way along and just finish off that little bit of wire. The reason I left that hanging around was in case I wanted to tie it onto the frame itself. I think that's probably quite enough of that. What I will do, however, is chase that tiny tail away, like so, so that it sits flat against that core wire that's coming up the centre. And maybe we'll just take a tiny amount of wire off the end, again, making sure that there's a nice flush cut to work with. And I will add another coil. So you can put coils in the exact number and position that you desire. There's that beginning of the round form. And again, you may prefer to use a coated plier for this next section, making sure that that coil is nice and tight. I'm going to bring that back and sit it up in that central area where we began the design. So we've got a number of coils, one on top of the other, but I like how that stack looks. You've got a couple of wires here onto which you can pop even more coils if you wish. I'll do something with those a little bit later and leave a photograph of this design once it's completed on the outro of today's video. What I do need to do is get to show you how it all ties together. So you will need to ensure that you do have that doming going on. And we will sit that over our chosen necklace. I quite like this upper 5-2 weave because it's tied very firmly at both ends, but it can sit over that very plain veil that we made in the base design of the dragon scale netting pendant from last week. So in order to bring everything together, all we are going to do is literally sew. Now I am not a seamstress by any chalk of the imagination, but you can see if I flip the design over that there are lots of points of attachment. So I'm going to take a very small piece of that 0.4 millimeter or 26 gauge wire. I've got that from the reel, but you could be using scraps at this stage. This is around about eight inches in length. And all I will do is find an adjoining point on the pendant section of the design. And I'm going to use the middle of my wire. This again is around about seven or eight inches. And at that central point on the finer wire, I'm going to wrap twice around an access point on the frame of that pendant, making sure that that's good and tight, like so. I have one wire going one way and one going off on the other way, but it's very firmly added to that pendant. I am going to tighten that little miniature coil up so there's no movement later on. You will need to be careful because you're working with a fine wire. So we're looking at the underside of our design now. With these, I will constantly flip them over and make sure that I'm happy, that all of the loops are sitting exactly where I want them to sit, that everything is still in position. So I'm quite happy with how that is positioned. My central loop is ever so slightly to the left of that narrow dragon's iris, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm happy with how it looks. So I'm going to pinch that very, very firmly. And I'm going to work over to the right because I'm right dominant. So all I need to do is find access points in the design. If you look very carefully, there's a position just beneath the loop as part of that New York skyline weave. And I'm bringing the wire all the way through inside that dragon eye design and then back up through the loop. And it is as simple as repeating the process. So I'm going to take the end of my finer gauge wire pop it through the frame of the pendant and push it into a point on that dragon section of the design. And it is a case of bringing that nice and taut, flipping it over rather, making sure it hasn't moved around. Yes, that all looks good. If you need to flip it to see where to take the wire, that's fine. So it's come up inside the New York skyline design. I'm going to take that wire end down inside that loop very carefully making sure there's no bagginess. It's very tense, but I'm not pulling on any kinks. So flip back to the other side, and we're going to take it again through the frame of the design, of the pendant rather, and down inside that New York skyline. So I'm just pushing it through, 
and the wire has gone through the frame of the pendant and then through the outermost wire that forms the loopy section. Pull that through. Straight lines with your sewing wire are what gives you a design that is both comfortable to wear or as comfortable as anything with multiple wires on it will ever be and also a strong design that's going to last. So again, I'm going to take that wire all the way through. Now, as you get towards the open sections on the design, you will need to just point your wire a little bit more upwards so that it can access the New York skyline section of the design. If it doesn't want to go through in one direction, allow the wire to go through. You can grab that with your pliers, but being very, very soft and gentle when you're pulling that through, making sure you don't allow any kinks to occur. And what we will do is simply take it through the New York skyline part of the weave on the return stitch. So I'm taking the tip of the wire now, popping it back through in the opposite direction. If you can get it to go through the, new, the frame of the pendant at the same time, all well and good. If not, pull that taut and then wrap it back around the frame of the pendant itself. Now what I need to do to finish off this section of sewing is find a piece on the back where I can simply wrap around the frame. So what I will do here is pop that through. If I can get it in one hit, I will bring that all the way through. If I can't, I'll post the end of the wire through to the front of the design and then bring it back through in the opposite direction. It's gone through in one hit, so that's good. Pulling that wire nice and taut so I've got straight lines. And to finish off on this side, I will wrap three times around the frame of the pendant. And that is all I need to do, but in two directions, top and bottom. So I'll finish off on this side, that's one wrap. You can make little needles with this finer gauge wire. So I'm going to push that again through the frame draw it back up in the direction that comes back towards me. I'm wrapping only around the frame of the pendant now, making sure that you're not crossing those wires over. So I've got two little wraps around the frame so far. Just to make sure that I'm happy with how strong it is, I'm going to put that through another time. So we're going to end up with about four wraps of wire. So I've posted the end through, grab that end and draw it all the way around making sure when I cut the wire that I'm cutting only the correct one. So I've taken that away. That's probably too hard worked now. That needs to go in the melt pot. And I'm going to ensure that there are no sticky uppy jaggy ends. Taking that cut tail down in between the cabochon itself and the cab frame. Now if I flip this back over to the front, you really can't see overly much where any of that sewing has occurred. You can obviously take great pains to make it next to invisible, but by the time I've added some charms or chain, or even brought these two wires, I may do another 5-2 weave, turn these wires on the far side, back in this direction. If there are any sections where I believe that stitches are visible, I can cover them up. Remember, you've got like a thousand coils that you can work with on a design like this. Let me flip it back over to the action side. So you remember how we had that scrap around about eight inches of that finer wire and I attached it twice on the center at the lower side of the pendant. I will do the exact same thing up here at the top, flip the design over and then I will sew in exactly the same way through the top segment just here, along here, along here, of that New York skyline weave. So you've got lots of places that you can sew the two articles together. So what we've done this week is we've made our beautiful dragon's eye style pendant design, and we've also attached it to the base pieces that we made last week. As I mentioned a few moments ago, I'm going to finish this design off. I'll probably do some extra weaving. I'll finish sewing everything securely together. And then you have your finished dragon eye pendant. So I'm going to weave along those two lower wires and just skirt it along the lower side of the actual eye itself. I'll pop a photo down just at the end of today's video. I want to thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed my dragon's eye pendant technique utilizing that lovely dragon scale pendant set from last week lots of different ways that you can make this happen endless possibilities have yourself a beautiful day don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content i look forward to seeing you again soon bye for now